Hello everybody, welcome to the NX Show. I'm your host, Eddie V. Joining me is the White Wisconsin Knight, Mr. Jesse Douglas. How's it going, everyone? Yes, everybody. Uh, apparently, Corey could not be here because he is moving, and Ray couldn't be here also because he had a family event that he had to attend. Um, but we got some great news for you guys that we're going to say to the end. Um, but me and uh, Jesse are going to be talking about the XO19. Uh, we're not going to be, t- be talking about what we've been playing or any uh, house uh, household notes uh, because there is this announcement is changing everything i can say i will say this me and jesse had a discussion about um death stranding hopefully our boss man will be able to show you guys that and we were going to get into some game of the year discussion uh but we just had a free-flown discussion <laughs> about <laughs> something and it's not and then not so much about who's right who's wrong or something no. it's really it's really just trying to predict uh where things could go and uh whether it's to get actual game awards or our personal game awards which we'll be Mm -hmm. talking about in the coming weeks um but uh hopefully you guys are having a great day having a great uh weekend week hopefully you guys are enjoying some games catching up on your backlog getting ready for thanksgiving like jesse are you ready for thanksgiving yeah yeah i'm ready (laughs) i'm ready i'm just ready for uh yeah the holidays and stuff (laughs) <laughs> Did you have a Thanksgiving game yet? Uh, um, that, you, that you'll probably uh, attack. No, but uh, I'm I might watch Thanks Killing. <laughs> oh wow, I haven't. I think you told me about that. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. have mentioned it, but I've never heard of it. Or I mean, I never heard of it. I never seen it yet. So yeah, that's very interesting. We'll we'll probably talk about that later. <laughs> so, uh, but we're going to talk about XO19 uh, right now. Me and Jesse watched it. Hopefully, you guys got to watch it. This was Xbox uh, conference about the Xbox One um, that they did in 2019. There was a lot of game reveals, a lot of announcements, some kind of like. Yes, like wow, I can't believe that they did that. And some were just like, mm-hmm. huh? Oh, oh, all right. I'm like, wait, huh? Really? So, I mean, it was exciting all around um, mm-hmm. for it. You know, they got stuff for Game Pass, they got stuff for, um, you know, uh, Project S Cloud that's coming. Um, and then just like a lot of indies um, for the show, um, two new games coming. One's coming from uh, Rare and another one's coming from Obsidian. Um, I think this is going to be Obsidian's first game, uh, I believe, for Xbox One. So yeah. it's kind of interesting. And um, me and Jesse watched it. Um, so we're going to get into discussing it. Um, Overall, before we get into breaking things down, because we're not going to break everything down, uh, what did you think of the conference, uh, Jesse, this year? I I was I was amazed by it, and I felt I felt like it um, it delivered on you know kind of what they were promising and what the you know what they were they were hyping and stuff that it was you know I I felt like it was a very big show, like it felt like you know like not not quite like full on like e3 but it it like it delivered enough stuff and like enough like surprising things happening like yes. i did i did not i did not expect to see something from obsidian and you know and and uh just any like any games from people who had just released you know brand new games like that yeah. Like I was completely shocked. Like maybe I, you know, I was like, we could see something from some of the other studios that have been done with their game for a while. But it was just crazy to, you know, like and I, and I guess with Rare, it's it's not it wasn't as big of a shock because, you know, like the game has been out for a while now, and they're you know they're kind of maintaining Sea of Thieves, but. So, you know, they probably they probably just had like a smaller group on the side working on something and, you know, or they're or they're focusing on that and and, you know, kind of taken taken a groups of people will go work on Sea of Thieves and whatever, you know, 
to give people preface, the game, the stuff that uh, Rare and Obsidian show uh, were mostly just trailer for, definitely uh, the game mm-hmm. that Rare did. Um, there were some gameplay ideas from uh, from uh, uh, Obsidian, uh, but you know they're still working on the game, so I think it may have been like pre-alpha footage. A lot of that may change. Um, yeah. later on and stuff but they did show some kind of gameplay ideas of what you'll get into and we'll discuss that later but go ahead jesse yeah yeah so like yeah they're they're just in like and like you know like phil spencer had had very very early like last year or whatever i think it was when they or well no i think it might have been before that but anyways like phil spencer had kind of been saying that you know like one of the things uh you know that's very obvious about the xbox is is that it hasn't had a lot of japanese like you know studios games and stuff on them and you know a lot of that stuff would go mostly to playstation or you know or would go to nintendo and Mm -hmm. and just a lot of things weren't coming over to xbox and so and you know just like we we've seen you know more and more japanese studio things or or things that that haven't been on xbox yet coming over and 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 i was kind of not that i'm like super into it um but but i'm i'm glad that xbox one will will be you know people who own it will be able to finally play the the kingdom heart games all of them on it now you know so so yes. that that was pretty cool like you know things things like that i feel like it was just like a like they did a really good job of you know this early on in the stages of you know before the new console gets released of of just kind of nailing home like kind of just showing you like they did a good job of showing us where the direction that they're continuing to go and that they are trying to get more of those those Japanese studios and stuff uh things to come over to the to the Xbox and hopefully next generation we might see you know things like I, I don't know that this would ever happen but it would be cool if like one day we got like the the new Persona game or something that was to come out and then like eventually get some of the back you know the back games ported or something like that i i don't know that that would ever happen but like you know it would be cool to see if like some of that kind of stuff was to come over eventually so you know i th- um, and i it, feel yeah. like next generation it would be it would be like if there's a new persona like f- you know mainline persona game being made mm-hmm. i think next generation would be would be much more uh, possible because you know if Xbox was to say, hey, you know, here's some money to help, to help, uh, you know, produce the game, you know, and then that way it came over. I don't know that that will ever happen, but, but I think it's <laughs> games like that that Xbox would have to try to focus on on getting over to really make a difference. Um, and you know and and bring bring and let people know that if you get an xbox there are games like that that you're no longer going to miss out on well it, but, it depends it depends on what microsoft does with sega um mm-hmm. and if sega is going to support um the xbox because um uh, persona is a weird thing atlas is a weird thing at this moment because atlas definitely works well with uh Nintendo and works well with Sony um but you really haven't seen much of their products on Xbox besides mm-hmm. like Kathleen Ka- Catherine on the 360 and um did they do Lollipop Chainsaw? I don't think no no they didn't do Lollipop Chain Chainsaw that I think that was Grasshopper manufacturer. I think that was somebody else not Atlas and stuff. Um yeah. but uh, cuz I know that's Suda, Suda 51. Um but I don't think Atlas I think at that time Captain and Lollipop Chainsaw was kind of like two big Japanese that was games that was going to yeah. be on the 360. Yeah. So it was kind of interesting to see that. Um I, I know for me personally uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um I I think the thing 
I think one thing, one of the things for it was that this conference really wasn't for me personally, uh, because of me buying the games physically and digitally and only only some of these games and playing them, but being happy that this is coming to Xbox and Xbox players get to play this. Um, I think I think one of the things that stood out uh, about it is that they went heavy on the Game Pass uh, mm. sus, uh, subscription service because it felt like that this was more for um, Game Pass and to get more people onto the service. So when uh, Scarlet rolls out or anything, uh, they will be able to carry that library over. Because I feel like I feel like with the games that they have now, it's going to carry a just tra- straight transfer over to Scarlet with it whenever that happens. So it's an mm. easy transition. Yeah. Um, definitely with them running out game pass ultimate so people will be able to play some of these games on pc so this is the thing uh jesse i'm looking right now at flight simulator that they're only showing on pc for game pass for next year they're not showing xbox it is for both console and and not, PC. Not by the, they not said by that the day one they not said that by the picture one. that they got. They're not about the picture that they got now. Uh, I'm, I'm, if, uh, just to let everybody know, I'm looking at uh, Destruct Toy, um, and they have a breakdown of all the game of everything that got announced. Um, and it says, uh, for um, it, it, uh, they have one like 50 games coming to Game Pass. Um, one of the pictures that says coming 2020 right now, uh, for Game Pass flight. Uh, flight simulator for PC. Um, I want, and I wonder, I think it still can come to Xbox. I think it still will come to Xbox One, uh, Jesse, but I think they're probably yeah, going to be says decent. Under, under it, it says platforms, Xbox One, Microsoft Windows. So I wonder if they, I wonder if they're using. They said it day one that it was coming to Xbox. I wonder if they're, I wonder then if they're changing it. Uh, I think it's only, go, no. I wonder if they're going to do it Game Pass for PC. And then Xbox One is gonna come down later. On, on, and the only reason why I say yeah, that that maybe, is only yeah, coming maybe to PC. it's in the only in the ultimate, but or something. But right, because by looking at it, looking at the list that they're showing right now on on this is that mm-hmm. uh, Flight Simulator coming 2020 for Game Pass is only on PC. Some of the game, other games that you see on here, it said con- console and PC because Bleeding Edge has console on PC. The Final mm-hmm. Fantasy games have console on PC. And don't forget, Bleeding Edge and even Ori and stuff uh, were only console bound. When they announced Game Pass for Ultimate for PC, uh, for uh, Xbox and PC, Flight mm-hmm. Simulator was right after it. So, even though they showed Bleeding Edge early at the E3 conference, they should it should have said console and PC for Flight Simulator. I don't know why they did not put it on there on on uh on this picture uh but just to give everybody a heads up one of the biggest things coming for game pass uh for it um there's going to be 10 final fantasy games uh unfortunately uh 11 to 14 is not coming anytime soon but it seems that phil spencer said that 14 will happen on xbox one um don't know when though uh i think he said something he might have talked about something like that but i know it's part of the headlines but we don't know um but but they kind of show that some of the games that are available now uh for it um like remnant from the actions uh remnant from the ashes uh rage 2 is on there age of empires 2 um lego ninjago uh the Tyler's principle um like those are on those are on there. Um, they talked about Halo Reach finally coming to uh, PC. Um, that's going to be in December, and that'll be on Game Pass. Um, yeah, the, it it'll be coming to the Master Chief Collection soon, because yeah. it, I I don't believe it's part of the Master Chief Collection on either console or PC yet. It, like it's um, so it's yeah. yeah. So like the the upgraded 4K, you know. 
like brand new looking version yeah will be coming out or at that same time and i'm yeah. looking forward to that because that see, that's one of the few uh halo games i haven't and, finished yet and so. see, they have that for console and pc so that is coming to game pass because i don't hello yeah. chief i think had the master chief collection is on game pass now yeah it's yeah it's been it's in there, there it's, but just yeah. that but, but just that particular game is going to be updated Okay, yeah, so um, see, it's yeah, the Master Chief Collection. They they're kind of they're slowly have been adding the games to it, like yeah. all the all the Halo games to it. Right. So um, the Richard Three is gonna be on console only. Uh, Dark Siders Two is gonna be on console and PC. Uh, so that's coming this holiday. So I think that's probably be sometime. Uh, this month and next month and then they just have a whole list um one of the standouts for it like i said is the uh, yakuza games um mm-hmm. which is going to be yakuza zero and yakuza kiwami one and two now one and two of that is are the remake games of the original yakuza game and mm-hmm. the second one so yeah because uh, we, we only we should... only have we only have zero so far right we don't no. have one and two you don't have I none. thought we had zero nope uh, when oh. Yakuza has only been a PlayStation, uh, okay. has only been a PlayStation um, series. Um, unfortunately, Yakuza One and Two came out for Wii U, but they kept it in Japan and they never brought it to America. Cause everybody in America was gonna buy it, and Sega said, "We know, we think this is not gonna sell." But Yakuza One and Two would have sold triple the time that they sold in Japan if Sega would have brought it over here. So it was their mistake. Um, y- Yakuza Zero One and Two, uh, uh, Kiwami One and Two, all of that's been on PlayStation. They've they've yeah. never bought anything outside. Even like the side games have been on PlayStation. Yeah. So um, yeah, so but, that's yeah. Those are the kind of things that that like were were in my opinion were very interesting. Is just seeing seeing those promises that Phil Spencer made kind of coming to to light finally. That we're yes. we're seeing some of those games like that that you previously yeah would really only be able to get mostly on PlayStation now coming coming over to the Xbox. So it's it's promising. Yes, um, Ori and the Will of the Wisp, Bleeding Edge. Um, we knew that they were going to be on Game Pass because their first party. They, you know, yeah. Mister always said their first party stuff going to be day and date. Uh, Final yeah. Fantasy Seven, Final Fantasy Eight, Final Fantasy uh, Eight Remastered, I should say. Uh, Final yeah. Fantasy Nine, Final Fantasy Ten, uh, Ten Two. Uh, the trilogy of Final Fantasy 13, which is three games, and Final Fantasy 15, all of those are coming to Game Pass. Uh, so yeah. um, you everybody could play in there. The only new one that's on there from the Final Fantasy games has is the 13 uh, trilogy, because yeah. uh, Microsoft would be the only ones that have it. Switch and PlayStation 4 don't have those games. Square Enix hasn't announced anything for those games to be released. Um, I could see it as a time exclusive for those games to come out on those other platforms. Um, but if you want guys want to play them, they'll be releasing sometime next year in 2020. Um, my friend Pedro has been a game that's been on Switch and PC, um, but that's not going to be on Game Pass. It may be on Xbox. Uh, um console like to buy digitally if you want i don't that i don't know i just know it's been a big thing on switch uh Mm -hmm. for it um yeah it's on yeah i'm pretty sure it's on it's on xbox yeah so i mean i mean so uh, you for right now like right i think race to remnant from the ashes uh are definitely games that people should check out if they have game pass and if you have game pass ultimate uh you know, really check those games out, and you guys are gonna get a ton more. Um, I think the thing about me, like I said, that most of that I've owned, uh, besides Ori, the Will of the Wisps, I'm like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do Game Pass for that because I'm gonna outright buy it since I have the first one. Um, I own most of the Final Fantasy games, um, I, so I'm not worried about you know replaying those or anything. Uh, so I mean I own like Yakuza one and uh Yakuza one and two the Kiwami ones and zero are already on on PlayStation so that doesn't do nothing for me but anyone who has not played this these games willing to give this stuff a try 
you know, they're right now, uh, you can do a dollar uh, for three months, which is uh, for a limited time. Like, you get a great value. Like, this is almost close to about 700 plus some dollars in value alone for like $10 a month. Or I think it's what, 15 for Ultimate? Uh, I believe. Uh, yeah. I yeah, think I think it's. So. I forget. Yeah. I, so, like, this. I only is, am paid a dollar or whatever for the year. Yeah. And so, everybody, you're going to get a huge value for this if you're into it. That's why I just said that that part wasn't for me because a lot of that they had is shown I own. Sorry. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, Wasteland. But there is a lot of games on Game Pass that you don't yes. own that you're not playing. You know, that's the thing is Game Pass is the future of like, and that's why they pushed it is because they know that that's that that's a it's such a such a major selling point for them right now because if because just the thought that you could go out and you could buy an Xbox and then pay a dollar and and have like hundreds of games that you could play right off the bat you know like without having to pay anything more than what you paid for the console you know is a is a big deal you know like that's that's a massive deal but and 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 that's in and also in case if you want to have a you know because a lot of these games that come to game pass is backlog games the older older games that's been out for regular traditional sale but if you just a lot of them a lot of them though like that come out week by week are are you know like every every time they release a batch it's usually two brand new games that just got released that day most most of it most of it if it's not first party or indie uh A lot of the stuff from third party that comes to it are older games. They've been out doing for during the traditional yeah. sale. Yeah. But like if you if you're interested in Gears Five, um, bam, Gears Five for ten dollars or one dollar, yeah, you can't pass up that value. You can't pass yeah. up Forza Four. Um, you can't pass up the Master Chief Collection and get a Halo Reach for pretty yeah. much for a dollar slash fifteen. Um, depending on when you're getting it at 4K, I mean that's a really great deal. Even though Halo is some older games, you can't pass up that 4K. That 4K yeah. if you have Xbox One X or if you have S also or a PC that could do 4K, I should say. Um, but other than that, like yeah, this is some good value stuff. They they came with it. Um, yeah. um so yeah. uh. They also announced that um, they're going to have some Black Friday deals uh, coming uh, for it. Uh, Microsoft is taking $150 off the top for Xbox One X console bundles and $100 off Xbox One S systems. Uh, from ne- November 24th to December 2nd, uh, the Xbox One X bundles for $349.99, Xbox One S bundles for $199.99, and Xbox One S all digital edition bundles for $199.99. One forty nine ninety nine, um, so that is a great deal for it. Mm-hmm. Um, some controllers and things like, uh, let's see, uh, they did uh, did announce some games too. Um, Gears Five would be thirty three percent off. Uh, Forza Horizon Four would be fifty percent off. Uh, sea of Thieves Anniversary Edition would be fifty percent off. State of Decay Two would be fifty percent off, and Hellblade: Sin and the Sacrifice would be fifty percent off. So you get some good Black Friday deals, uh, like Borderlands Three, FIFA Twenty. Like they're gonna be breaking it down. Um, and I think you guys can check that uh on online. Um, or if you do live close to a Microsoft store, they may have the same deals going on there. But uh, they yeah. well, if that. you live by a Microsoft store, you can if you uh, before before December, if you get uh, do the payment plans for the mm-hmm. the Xbox One X, uh, you can you can upgrade to the Scarlet next year. They're doing that. So if you if you're by a uh, um, a Microsoft store. Um, and you you want to get the new console, I suggest taking advantage of that of that offer of getting the the one x uh, payment plan and and then getting the the free the I, I believe it's gonna be a free upgrade to the to the scarlet. so 
I, I, I'll say if you're gonna do that, talk to the sources, do some research first. <laughs> the country, yeah, because like it sounds good, but like if you wanna if you wanna cancel it, it may be a hassle, and that might be something that you wanna know more know more about. Well, it's uh, it's 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 no different than buying a phone. Like I mean. It's no different than getting a phone and you're just getting charged every month for it, for the services and, uh, and, you know, and, uh, and, you know, you pay the, I think it's like $32 a month and, and for, uh, I think for two years or something like that. And then you get the, and then after the two years, after you've paid it off, it ends up being cheaper than what it would have been to pay for all the services and the console. But, I think it ends up being like over a hundred dollars cheaper, uh, by the end of it. And, and then you get to keep the console once you've paid it, everything off. Then at, at that point, just like with your phone, you, you then own it and you, you don't have to pay anymore after that, you know, after the contract is, is, uh, is, is paid. So, and, and they're, yeah. And they're saying, if you get it, if you get, get into that Xbox one X, uh, payment plan before December 1st, uh, you'll, you'll be eligible to upgrade to the, the Scarlet once it comes out. So, well, and that's why I said, just make sure you do the research and mm-hmm. it, and well, that's, what they, it. that's what they said. So, yeah. Yeah, because you know, saying something and doing something, like I said, it's two different things. We, 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 uh, so side note, uh, I was telling Jesse this that we were gonna, we at Taurus R Us when we was open, we were gonna be doing a plan like this for Xbox, but not with Game I don't think Game Pass was, uh, part of it at that time. And so we were reading, like, before it, it never happened. But we were reading like how the cancellation stuff goes through, and it was just it, it literally was just like like you had to pay. I think you had to pay something for cancellation. You were still going to be charged something till that um till it was all up and paid for or it was mm-hmm. over. So they were still going to yeah, charge you for like service. Yeah, it's like any contract. Service. Yeah, it's yeah. like any contract. You can't but break I think, a contract without being. Without being, uh, you know, penalized. Well, that's just, yeah, that's, but they had to, no they had to return, they would have to return the system in working condition. Yeah. And if it yeah. wasn't in, if it wasn't in working condition with it. the controllers and stuff, right? Because yeah, you didn't pay for it. Uh, right, because it was, it was like you was renting. It was just like the cancellation at that time seemed more than just actually buying the system. Because we were just like. My goodness, I'm like, by time yeah. you, by time, by time you really get your money's worth out of this, within three months you could have just bought an Xbox One. <laughs> like we yeah. was, really, we literally was reading it. It was just like, well, then you know why that was? That was because it, because of um it being them being a uh a middleman. Like there, there was like part of that money was going to you guys, and part of the money was probably going to Microsoft as well. So, so, so what it was was there was there was extra hands in in the uh, in that that thing. So, like that's why I think Mike, Microsoft is doing it this way, and and. Mm-hmm it sounds like the only thing other thing that it's going through is Amazon, but, but Microsoft then that way can make sure that, that people aren't paying more than they absolutely have to by it just going through them because then they're the only ones who are directly, you know, like the money is going to, you know, I I, I just feel like it, Oh, I just ahead. feel like for me personally, I'm just, oh, for, I think just for me personally, I'm just like the money, it feels like that will be used to do the service. I think you could just outright go and buy the system. It, it will be, yeah, I mean, you could, but it's, it's, get, it, it will be cheaper. Ultimate. Um, if, and prices but it, it it depends it's once again it depends on that budget that you have 
it's a budget thing depending yeah. like if you're available to afford it to like outright buy it, or if this seems like a better option for yeah. you um but you know the that's re- why i said just reason, do your research uh, about yeah it. the reason um, the reason it ends up okay. being cheaper is because there's certain parts of the uh like you know how you have to pay for you have to pay for you know xbox live uh game pass and all those things, mm. like all those things, are included in that in that bundle. But you're technically, I think, the only thing they're making you pay for is the console, and and Xbox Live. Um, but Game Pass or something like that is included with that bundle, so that's why it ends up being cheaper in the in the end, or something like that. It's it's something like yeah. that. I because I, I've, I've heard people talk about it and um. I I can't remember if it was Game Informer or someone who who went over over the expenses of everything and added it all up and they figured figured it out at the end that it that you would actually pay less for all those things at the end at the end of your of when you pay the console off you'll have ended up saving like a hundred dollars or something like that. Or maybe it was like sixty or something. I don't yeah. remember, but it's still either way. If you you know saving money is saving money, especially if you're you know the whole reason you're doing the the payment plans is because tra- you probably can't afford to buy it outright. So you know. Uh yeah, so do check that out. Uh, if it does lead to a free Scarlet, yeah, take advantage of that. Go go on in. Uh, I, I can't really wait for E3 to hear more about the Scarlet. I really want to see yeah. what. Uh, let me rephrase that. I really want to see what tr- uh, CGI trailers they're going to show, and if it's in-game engine that they're running, or is this an idea of how a game may possibly look like on Scarlet? Um, mm-hmm. Once again, I'm holding my I, I'm holding my skepticism of the 4K 60 frames per second until I actually see it in play. <laughs> and I really, because I really want to go to a Best Buy. I really want to go to a Microsoft store. And I want to see a game actually running on that computer or running on computer monitor or running on that TV. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying that's me. Um, I know. Because it's, I feel like it's just this funny. is what the Xbox One. It's just funny because, like, you know, like the the... Like the Xbox One can already do 4K like native, and and, and it's only 30 frames. But like all you know that adding of power, mm. it, it's it it's not, it's it's not uh you know that that hard to to think that it well it should easily be able to do 60 frames per second because I mean it, there you know it's gonna be a major jump in power compared to the Xbox One X so. It, I I'm not worried about that at all. <laughs> well, I am. I just and, and like I said, and we discussed this many times. We're gonna move on. It's just that hopefully that with all the teraflops and all of that technical babble that they said, that I hope they they stay true to that. Um, because a certain company at this time <laughs> are not delivering on what they. They spoke of, I should say, not promise, spoke of. So, um, so, uh, you know, we talked about uh, Obsidian and Rare uh, announcing two new games. Um, uh, Don't Nah is also releasing a new game called Tell Me Why. Um, this is going to be the first game, uh, whose protagonist is transgender. Uh, they are, um, uh, tell me why it focuses on a close story, close bond between two twins, Tyler and Allison Ronan. A true to life story determined by player choice. Tell me why we trust players with the emotionally challenging childhood of its protagonists as they come to grasp with their past and grow into adulthood in Alaska. Um, this I'm reading this off of Game Informer. Uh, the core mechanic of the game is the special bond Tyler and Allison share, and it's also a thing strongly anchored into the Don't Not storytelling approach, says game director Florent Goulamy. 
Uh, over the course of the story, players will explore the identical twins' different memories of key events and choose which memory to believe. Ultimately, the choices players make determines the strength of the twins' bond and the future course of their lives. Aside from the already inventive narrative approach, Tell Me Why pushes for inclusiveness as one of the twins, Tyler, is a transgender man. Microsoft and Don't Not have approached Tyler with a real commitment to authenticity, explained Nick Adams, director of transgender representation at GLAD. Tyler is a fully realized, enduring character whose story is not reduced to simplistic trans tropes. Creating a playable league trans character and taking such care to get it right raises the bar for future LGBTQ inclusion and gaming. The entirety of Tell Me Why will release in summer 2020, despite being an episodic adventure broken into three parts. The game will be free to those with Xbox Game Pass and available for purchase on Xbox One, Windows PC, and Steam. Um, and just to let everybody know that Don't Not's prior releases, uh, you can check out Remember Me, Vampire, Life is Strange, and Life is Strange 2. Uh, that's the games that they release. Um, is Don't Not uh, Don't Not is a company that Microsoft now owns, right? Um, or did they partner up with them? I think they partnered up with them, right? Because I don't think- yeah, because I don't think I don't think they've bought them at all. Because right. th- that would be kind of yeah, that would be kind of weird because with Life is Strange and all that stuff being uh, being only on Xbox now would be I don't think that yeah, I think that would have been right. a big deal if if that had happened. Because Life is Strange was uh, was also published by Square with Square Enix, so. Oh, yeah. And who um, knows? I mean, honestly, who knows? Like, it could be, like, maybe, maybe that that is one that they're looking to acquire, and this it's just early stages, and they they're not a lot or not able to report anything yet. But yeah, because like, because I cause, mean, it's very possible we could we could see more acquirements during E3, but right, because Microsoft and even Nintendo, Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony, none of those companies have a venture game like Telltale used to be. Um, mm-hmm. And Microsoft will, if they end up purchasing, don't not, they will be the first company to actually, uh, first publisher to actually have one under their first yeah. party belt to do that. So, mm-hmm. um, uh, so uh, are you think of thinking about picking up this game? I I might give it a try. I think I'll 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 just outright buy the season and see what it's about. Like I'm I'm glad that someone is doing this, that they're pushing the storytelling and everything. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping they uh they kind of do what they did with us. Uh, Life is strange too, where they have a free little kind of like intro to the mm-hmm. story. Uh, just to give people a little taste of it to see, you know, see. Well, because like, because my problem was I didn't like Life of Strange one, but I do like Life of Strange two. Um, well, I think because they're not gonna do it is because since this is all gonna be on Game Pass, if you have yeah. it, you're getting it outright free. Yeah, yeah, of that's true. No Game Pass. That's true. But if that's you true. don't, if you don't have it. If you don't have Game Pass, I could see uh, that a little small taste of a demo being out. If not, yeah. you could just outright buy it, you know, yeah. and or wait for a review for it. Because I'm assuming it'll be like June, July, August that each game will each uh, episode will come out. That's yeah. my, and I and I think probably because they could do this. The first game could come out once. E3 starts. So that Sunday that Microsoft goes out and talk about their conference, bam, um, tell me why. Or do I'm... like they or or like I said, they could do like they did with Life of Strange. Life, yes. Life is Strange too, where they uh, after E3 they had released that that small little um like that small well, yeah. little intro thing and then you know just and then the game released could the come game. out. Yeah. Yeah. And and that yeah, they could do yeah, they could they could do that for well, yeah, for E3, yeah, for their conference. So let's just say if you own Game Pass, you get the first episode. If you don't own it, you get the demo. And then if you like yeah. the demo, then you can full out buy the game yeah. or buy that episode that day. Yeah, I can see yeah. that happening. Um, yeah. 
Uh, another game that got announced was Grounded by Obsidian. Um, this is a game that they've been working on uh, probably while they was doing uh, the Outer Worlds. Um, this is a survival game where players explore a microcosm of our world. Um, like Jesse said, it's Honey, I Shrunk the Kids <laughs> meet Survivor. Yeah. Uh, yeah, survival tactics in a, uh, in a sense. Uh, Ground is a co-op survival-friendly survival game where up to four players are shrunken to the size of an ant and then tasked with gathering supplies to build a camp while fending off threats from the local insect population. Um, Grounded offers our unique take on survival games and creating an unforgettable experience, says game director Adam Benek. It's a perfect setting for it to flex our creative muscles. We want to create a versatile sandbox where players can create their own memorable experiences. Um, so that's going to be on Xbox One and PC through, uh, um, if you have Microsoft Game Preview, uh, you are, uh, you could be have early access to it um, um, through the Xbox Game Pass programs. Um, so, like, if you have it, you, people probably have tried it. I haven't seen much. Um, there is a preview of it on Game Informer, so you guys can read that um, for it. Uh, but, yeah, th- uh, that's Obsidian's... Uh, this is Obsidian's first game for Microsoft Xbox alone. So... Um, it, it won't be on any other platform unless Microsoft allows it to be on different platforms. So, um, yeah, I, I think that was one of the things. There was a lot of games that did this kind of uh, survival of a game because um, there's another one that was like an indie game and stuff. And I'm just like, um, this is not my cup of tea, but I'm glad that they're able to do something like this. Uh, what, what are yeah. your thoughts? Yeah, I think I think what's kind of nice and you know what what this game seems to be is like basically and and like honestly a lot of the games that we've seen uh at this at this show mm-hmm. um it seems like they're kind of taking the direction of like okay, now we've got our halos and we've got our you know, dooms and our, we've got our, all these, you know, games like that, that will be coming third party. Um, like we, the one thing we need to do is focus on bringing some really good games that, that younger kids and stuff can enjoy as well. And them being real games that aren't just too kiddish to, you know, like, and and brings more stuff like that 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 you could play like me and you know my son can play together or you know things like that like i'm like i'm excited like i think i think uh grounded would be a, a fun game to play to play with uh you know with your kids and stuff like that because it is going to be i believe a four player co-op game so um, yeah so like i i think this will be a very fun like almost kid version of of like of uh of outer worlds or something you know like it's like it, it'll be similar in some ways to outer worlds where it's like you're you're crafting different tools and stuff like that uh that's what it sounds like uh from what i've heard because they, you know they, people did get to play it uh there at exo um and uh-huh. and so like i think it's gonna just be like a fun like kids version of like that type of of uh rpg where you're you know you're crafting things and you're you know building houses out of the grass and stuff like that and so um i'm i'm excited for it it, it sounds it sounds fun it it looks like it would be fun um you know, I guess we'll see once we get more more about it. But I, you know, I I, I trust that they'll they'll make a a really solid game. So yeah, yeah. Um, so Rare announced Evil World. Um, it's their one of their new games. Uh, this it doesn't look there's like much. I think it's about magicians for it. Uh. They also announced, uh, talked about new DLC for CLD, uh, CLDs coming out. Uh, there's mm-hmm. a free update, so you guys can check that out. Um, I still need to update mine. Uh, I think mine yeah. is waiting in the queue, um, but I think I got to put the CD in uh, for the game in. 
Oh, okay. so they they announced that um, Bleeding Edge is coming out in March of 2020. I think March 24th. On my birthday. Yep. <laughs> On yep. my birthday. <laughs> so um, they showed a little get a little bit of gameplay for that. So I think keep looking out for Inside Xbox to get more information about that. Um, yeah. Uh, Phil Spencer spoke at the end, and uh, they show more of Minecraft uh, out there. Um, like, I think it's Dungeon or, or Earthlink yeah. or something like that. Yeah, Minecraft uh, Dungeons. Okay. Yeah, so they show, they kind of ended the show a little bit with that. Um, we uh, Halo 4, like we said, is coming to Game Pass. Um, but that pretty much was it. You know, there were some highs um, with their, um, they didn't, they, kind of showed about their adaptive controller uh, kind of started off with that you know for people yeah. with dis- disabilities and stuff so they were promoting that so it was kind of good to see uh that happening and everything uh yeah. but, oh, yeah, but overall which, go ahead what did you oh. like when they were when they were showing the uh they they were showing during the time when they were talking about the console streaming and the x cloud yeah. stuff did you notice yeah. that they, when they showed all the controllers by phones, one of the controllers was the adaptive controller? So yes. they're So they're basically showing you that even people who are using the adaptive controller will be able to play the, the console streaming as well, which is very awesome. Yes. Um, they so. did talk about uh, Project S Cloud um, adding a couple more games, bringing it up to 53. Um, they saying that it's also coming to PC um, next year. Uh, you can uh, yep. use your controllers and your DualShock 4 controllers. That that mm-hmm. part didn't go over well by people, but um, I'm assuming right now you can't use your Pro controller for Switch. I don't think you could use that yet. Um, but they just, you know, expanded more on it and everything. So it's kind of good to see that that's happening. Um, yeah, my clip for mine is that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so I can play it. It's yeah, it worked. Like I said, it worked good as I played a, a game of uh, multi, uh, multiplayer of Modern Warfare online from mm-hmm. my phone, and it worked really good. So I'm excited for it. it it's working well for me so far in the preview program so okay um, yes and and like uh, like the thing i was thinking about uh last week when we or last time that we talked about this too uh-huh. is like what i'm excited for too is just the fact that 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 this means hopefully like cross your fingers this means that that uh hopefully sony will have something like this as well that that they'll be able to offer so you know, because they're they're kind of working but, on the whole streaming stuff as well. You know, so so they you know hopefully yes. they'll have the whole X Cloud type thing for theirs soon, pretty soon here too. If you know, because that's the thing is like Microsoft and is kind of working has been working on it and working on getting it done and and I I think PlayStation's probably just secretly working on it as well. You know, you because remember they're using they announced that they're using. Uh, Microsoft's uh, technology and and mixing it with their technology and yes. you know kind of working together to try to try to come up with a a viable way f- to make it you know work so so it should be interesting and hopefully Sony uh, Sony fans and stuff will have have something very similar to this soon to look forward to as well so yes so um that kind of was the show uh, for Xbox um, XO19 in London. Uh, I believe t- I believe it was only for three days, uh, two or three days. I yeah, think today's was, the last yeah, day. I think it was recording. three days. Yeah. So um, you guys can like watch the stream and everything uh, if you would like to. Uh, once again, before we actually start making this announcement, and then we're gonna let you guys go. Uh, we do apologize for the technical difficulties. Uh, once yeah. again, Skype was acting kind of naughty, and we're in the Midwest with winter, so or well, not winter, dealing with snow, and so um, sometimes the phone lines don't like to be right. <laughs> I could just say that, uh, but. We have a announcement. So, Jesse Douglas, Ray Apollo, I, Eddie Varnell, 
and Corey Derrick. Everybody, you have known us as um, Codename NX, the NX project that has been our name, but we have come together and came up with a group name that we are officially going to be running with um, to let everybody know this is the last show for the name code name uh the nx show we'll be switching over to the new name but it'll still be continue as the same episodes and stuff everybody we want to introduce you to boss rush games um this is going to be the boss rush games podcast uh this is our officially our announcement of the group uh unfortunately Corey and ray couldn't make it like i said because they were, um, they had other things they had to do, um, but Jesse got some great music for the shows, um, for and things. Uh, when Corey comes back, he's gonna give us a great breakdown of what he hopes that this network would be. Um, so, um, it's gonna be starting us just with us four. Um, we're still gonna be doing the podcast and everything, but we also got some hopefully some Patreon things coming soon down the line. Uh, we're gonna be adding more podcasts. We're gonna be adding more shows. Um, you know, you guys kind of can see in our YouTube page earlier in the past weeks um, what the name was, but we officially couldn't confirm it yet. Uh, I. I I, I know I was just like people are asking questions and everything and they was probably getting an idea like what's going on and stuff uh, but Corey had to do that so we could get the names get the name early but uh, Bush, Bus, Boss Rush Games is <laughs> our official group name um, we all still have our same roles uh, I will be hosting the podcast Corey is like behind the scenes producing uh, Jesse is our music uh, director our creative with that um, Ray you know he does the streaming so uh, he's able to spread more of the word there um, and we're all just going to be working together to deliver like great and fun content we are still about being better uh, about being respectable, uh, being positive about games, being critical, not neg mm -hmm. not, not negative, being critical of games. We could call some things uh, questionable content. If we feel like, so, if we all agree that something is hot, flaming garbage, <laughs> we would do it in a nice way. <laughs> I would just mm -hmm. say that. Um, but, you know, we're bringing Pod and Play over. We're bringing Nintendo Power Block. We're bringing uh, Nindy Showcase, uh, squad goals um uh indie masterclass uh our movie commentary is going to be doing and stuff we're, we're going to be bringing stuff from our past create uh creative content to uh here and then expand and grow on it so there's going to be a new show like uh hit them hard um uh i'm going to continue to get that rolling out more um at this time, I was I was getting my work schedule together, but um, while that's still coming together, I'm going to be like, you know, playing these games and recording them. Um, we're still going to be doing streams because there's a lot that we want to show you guys. Um, you know, standard definition, doing our one on ones, uh, doing podcasts from other people um, who wants to join us and everything. There's a lot that we want to do, um, and we still need what you have you guys involved with us because we love the community, mm -hmm. we love our listeners. You know, we love the feedback that you all give us. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Jesse. Um, what do you see for Boss Rush Games for the future? Yeah, like my 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 hope is to you know my goal kind of is to uh, to yeah get like definitely I want to see like more interaction uh, with with uh, listeners and things like that and you know hopefully have like ga things like game nights and and yeah. stuff like that. Um, you know, unfortunately, like with me working third shift, um, you know, I it it'll be a little bit harder for me to get as as involved. But but there, you know, like if we if we plan things out on like a weekend, um, you know, as if we plan things out, like I can definitely make it happen on a weekend where we can, you know, play earlier in the day or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's. Like for me, I just, I just, yeah, I would like to have more interaction and more, more, uh, 
you know, connecting with, with people who listen and, and just, you know, just having fun, you know, having fun with it, you know, doing what we love to do together. And, and, you know, also with, you know, more content and stuff like that. Like I'm, I definitely want to get back to doing more things, uh, you know, recording more stuff and, and like, you know, our movie commentaries, those were always a lot of fun. Yes. Um, like I was I watching our Ninja those. Turtles. I was watching our first Ninja Turtles one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which so uh, I, which I, they added some new episodes of uh, the toys that made us, uh, the toys that made us episodes. On Netflix. On, on Netflix, yeah, and they added a oh, turtles start... one that's really good. I gotta they talk watch about it. the turtles. Yeah. I gotta watch. So. I'm probably gonna watch it tonight when I get home. Yeah. They and and I'm I just started the first episode of uh, um, Man in the High Castle. The final season just got released, so I so heard, yeah. I heard that this fourth season because they've been advertising the fourth season. Yeah, this is the yeah. final one. I heard people were just like, where are they going with this? Like people yeah. are excited to see. Yeah, this. yeah. But it, but anyways, back, back to they <laughs> went on a little tangent there. But no, no, that's, um, that that literally is part of the Boss Rush games. Like we yeah, want to cover yeah. entertainment and movies and yeah. anime stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, that's the thing is, yeah, we wanna we wanna talk about all the things that excite us and hopefully you know connect with people that that on things that excite them as well. You know, like it. You know, where you can always depend on us to talk about games but like part of the part of the fun will you know should always be like what else will you know what else will they come up with or or yeah. bring up you know on the show so but yeah like i like my main goal like honestly is just more more interaction and and um you know and and more positivity with you know with with the things that we all enjoy doing and you know, and hopefully, you know, building a community where people don't have to worry about what they like or don't like, you know, because, you know, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be that way. You shouldn't have to say, you know, like, oh, I like this and I, you know, and feel like a, like it'll be hard for you to say that you like something just because, you know, maybe a lot of people don't or whatever, you mm. know, things like that. We, we just want to build a community where you know the the main focus is just having fun and and uh talking about the things we love so yeah and we're going to probably be doing deep dives and reviews yeah. and having like bigger discu- discussions uh spoil op- spoil casts and things like cast, that i'm sure um optional opinion will uh be having episodes over here so n- I mean, optional opinion is still going to be independent, but it's also going to be on part of Boss Rush Games. So uh, when an episode come out, Boss Rush Games will also it'll be on the website that you guys can hear it too. Um, mm-hmm. Which I'm going to be uh, getting back into the recording. Uh, I, I feel better now uh, that I could do it. My job is getting to where it's at. So I'll be recording more episodes with that. So you guys will be able to hear that podcast and everything. Um, so we got a lot of great stuff coming um, for 2020. Uh, we are starting small, so like we would love mm-hmm. to, you guys to continue to support us, continue to watch our streams, c- continue to engage us, um, send us questions and everything. Um, next, like I said, next episode we will be going in full detail about it, um, how things are going to run, and you know what we want to do with it because like we are excited um we we have our ups and downs we have our various opinions but we all gel so well together you know Mm -hmm. we always could bounce off of each other we could if we're mad at mad at somebody for 15 minutes or whatever conversation hey i'll be like jesse did you try this I, yeah. I seen this, and if well, we and have it, to apologize, we apologize. Yeah, and <laughs> and it's well, and 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 honestly, I don't think we're ever really actually mad at each other. No. It's just, it's just like we, you know, like you 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 get in a debate, and and like if you're, you know, like it just sometimes you just don't you don't see, you know, have the same ideas or the same 
you know, thoughts or theories or whatever you want to call it on something. And so, you know, you, you, it's part of debating, but at the end of the day, it's like, you know, we're just glad that even if it is a game that, that I don't like, I'm, I'm glad that there is that game still because, because that's the thing is, is you'll, you'll never know whether something is going to be good or not, or whether something's going to work or not if that game doesn't come out like it might not be for me or like you know like a lot of the times these games that come out are are nothing more than uh um they had created you know different kinds of uh of you know mechanics and things like that and they're like well instead of just wasting all this stuff that we spent all this time on we should make a game out of it release it and then now we can build on those mechanics for our next main game, you know? Yeah. Like, we see that happen a lot. Like, like um, you know, Sunset Overdrive, it was, like, a lot of those mechanics ended up getting used in the Spider-Man game. Like, they, you know, like, game companies do stuff like that. So it's good that things come out, and and it's good when people do like things because even though ever it's not for everyone it's still a good thing because that it keeps you know that that options for certain people and and maybe they are niche but but i mean that's the the beauty of you know of of video games <laughs> you know around this time is is just like there are so many different kinds of games and so many different things and and yeah most things probably aren't going to interest you but but it's good that they're there because there yes. there's going to be a whole group of people that it will interest so and you know. no and no matter what when it cuz I know game of the year discussion is big and then yeah. we're going to uh end the show yeah. uh, no matter what we do here at Boss Rush Games for game of the year um, we all have our personal ones. We all mm-hmm. could share and agree on one particular game, whatever that may be. Um, but w- just because a, one game gets that game of the year doesn't mean that everything this year is excluded or didn't do what it was supposed to do. Because literally 2019, personally for us, was a really strong year in our content that we made and the games that we played, the discussions that we have, the laughs, the jokes, the mm-hmm. uh, the bouncing back, the just the... the just the conversations that <laughs> sorry mm-hmm. the conversations that you guys don't get to hear uh gaming together like you, you and Corey doing squad goals uh me and ray having that one-on-one conversation for the show just like everything that we have did this year or in our past years have built us up to be something better and be and stronger and so hopefully with boss rush games that people will enjoy the content that we deliver to them so with that mm-hmm. everybody Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being with us. Continue to support us. Uh, welcome to Boss Rush Games. Boss Rush Games. <laughs> welcome to Boss Rush Games podcast. Uh, or Boss Rush podcast. I think that's going to be it. Cannot wait for you guys to see the logo. Love the logo. I love the logo. The music is top notch. Jesse clowned on this one. Like, he literally <laughs> clowned. And it, it's so... I, 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 I had to yell at him in a sense because I couldn't listen to what he to what he finalized because every time he drops something I want to listen to it I want to uh, critique on it I want to like like no you need to change this I can hear this and you know I, like I visualize I visualize uh, Jesse's music but this one I was just like you know what he's not done with it I'm shutting up you're gonna give me the final version and I'm going to be like this is it knocked it out yeah. the park. So. Which it is, it is finalized now. There was some little tweaks that I had to make to it because, uh, because I had I had my equalizer on my phone on, uh-huh. and so things sounded like they they had more bass to them and all that when they when they didn't only because my equalizer on my phone made it sound better than it was and things like that. So I had to I had to tweak it a little bit and but otherwise that the one that I released last is the final version. So yeah. So with that everybody have a great week. Have a great weekend. Jesse, uh thank you for trying out the flaming hot uh smart food. <laughs> yeah, those are good. They were good. Yeah. 
Uh, and everybody, we will see you next time on Bosch Rush Gang Podcast. Oh, Bosch Rush Podcast. With that, everybody. Bye. Bye. Uh, the EXO stuff is probably going to be not everything on it, uh, but probably just the uh, but probably just the stuff that is like really important that stood out. So like Game Pass, Game Pass stuff. Uh, not all the indies or anything, but kind of just like some something that we caught eye in the. So if you want to talk about the Crossfire X, but you can speak about that again. Like we're not gonna run through the whole time. But just like stuff that's just so you know, like you're kinda of cutting out and stuff. <laughs> oh, you it's it was probably because of Skype. Uh when yeah. I switched to the recording, it does something like that. Is it fixed now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, look at Lenny is done for the count. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's just like uh, I'm not waking up for anything. Well, he's he's waiting for me to get he's waiting for me to get done because the second I get up and go upstairs, he's gonna be all all full of energy. He, oh, it's just he he's he uh he wants to be by me like at all times. So ah, uh, gotcha. Okay. So, um, yeah, we'll probably be done by maybe one thirty, one forty-five, um, okay. or anything. Because I know you probably want to get back to sleep, or you got things to do, and I don't have to be at work still three. Uh, but, yeah. Okay. Know. So, so yeah, you did cut out a little bit. So, so we're gonna oh. we're gonna talk about the 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 name of the show and stuff, and then you said. Are we we're are we talking about XO as well then? Yeah, yeah we're we're gonna start with XO and then we're gonna end by talking about the show, uh, the new name okay. and the new channel and everything. So we're gonna okay. do the reveal and everything. Um, okay. Because like Corey said, like he said, next week he wants to do a deep dive, so we're gonna be focusing on that unless we get some crazy announcements that we don't know. Because I think next week after talking about that. Um, we'll probably touch on the Game Awards because I think it's December 12th. Um, okay. And so we'll probably start doing predictions with there. I I, I just woke up and felt kind of conflicted about it because, um, and then we'll get into it, I don't think Death Stranding should be, uh, be in any of the nominations due to Jeff well, Keighley being in that game. Yeah, well, I... I don't know. I just, I personally just don't, I just don't, don't think it, it should be period. <laughs> it just, well, I mean, I haven't played it, but, mm-hmm. but like, I, like, I'm, I'm glad that Dan on, on, on Beastcast has uh-huh. been standing his ground and the rest of the, the people on Giant Bomb and stuff have been defending him because, like he you know he he was a he's a major you know like his favorite franchise is metal gear solid yeah. he loves kojima games but like he just he just said that this game is is crap it's it's like it's just it's it's like movies that that are created the only reason like you know how certain movies feel like they're just created just to win an award and that's mm-hmm. it like yeah. it's just it's just main focus is okay what can we do in this movie and how can we make it to win an award and it's not like 
yes, it, it it's a good movie, but it's but it's just so apparent that they tried so hard just to try to win an award. That's what this game feels like. It try it feels like it's trying way too hard to try to be, you know, and and I don't know. It, Kojima just seems like he's pretty arrogant. And like thinks that his shit don't stink. <laughs> like well, I don't at, know. He well, just seems at, to be at, too at, full of himself. I, I think it's something that it's a game that whether you're a fan of Kojima or not, is something different and it's something unique. And sometimes kind I think, of I, I think I think when when, kind when, of when unique. I think well, unique unique in the sense that um some of the gameplay mechanics on how that all comes together, like the stranding and all of that stuff. And yeah, switch. well, stranding, but but the argument is that stranding isn't exactly something that, that's that's I'm really using, new. I'm using, right, I'm just using because Gene was turned. That's how yeah, the no, I know, but I know I, I understand. Understand. I completely understand what you're saying. I'm. I'm just saying that the argument could be made that that w- what he calls stranding isn't yeah. exactly, exactly new. New. Yeah. It. You know. It. It's because stranding is like basically just the idea that other people can can help. You know, create this world or whatever, and and that that's not not that's not exactly well, brand new. Well, like I think. That, because they, they have okay. like all the different podcasts I've listened to have like gone over it, and almost all of them agree that yeah, stranding isn't exactly something that's new. I think, I think, per se, but I think when they got people got their hands on it, they seen some of the similar gameplay mechanics in other titles. So yeah. rebranded or branding it a different name doesn't make it new. So that that yeah. I understand. Um, I I think I, I think the thing about it is Death Stranding is something that you know if you're willing to give it a chance and everything, you're able to judge it for yourself whether you like it or not. Yeah. I don't think I personally can't say that it's crap or nothing. I think no. one of I think one of the big problems with Death Stranding, and this is just like I said from an outsider's look, is that it's uh it didn't sell us on anything, but who the special guests and celebrities you have in your game. You mm-hmm. sold us on cutscenes of what Death Stranding could be, but you didn't give us what the premise and what the mystery 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 uh mystery was about. Couldn't say that right for no something. Um so for us as Americans and for us as Americans, people who cater to games that um they don't want to uh they don't want to you know that they're comfortable in and don't want to get out of their comfortability they'll look at this game and won't touch it and literally make a judgment about it without touching it and so mm-hmm. they use their judgment to spread that as a message for people to stay away from a game that they haven't played you know mm-hmm. and so that so Death Stranding feels like if you're willing to give give this game a chance, because some people co- are making it their personal game of the year. Some people are really getting something out of it that reviewers, whether you agree with the review or not, that you could see some of the stuff that you might feel like they miss or you feel like they got and be like, okay, I see it. But now because it's out to more of the public, it expounds more. You know, yeah. And, and well, and I, I think, I think my main, my main thing with it is, mm-hmm. I think that, that on, on paper, the there's certain aspects of the game that seem like they would, like they would be kind of fun and it would be kind of neat. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but what, what, you know, what they had found out, um, you know, like the people that I've listened to talk about it, because like, again, like almost all, like almost everyone in, on giant bomb, um, enjoyed playing it, but, but they just like, they, but the overall experience wasn't, wasn't, uh, good enough for them. You know, like the story was very draw 
dragged out, but it didn't actually really go anywhere that Mm. was significant. And like just things like that, like there were, you know, there were interesting moments in the story, but the story as a whole was just pretty lackluster. And like the, the thing is like one of the things that they mentioned too is in like, and you kind of, you know, you think about it, like just the whole idea of the concept of the stranding part, like they said, you know, like, really great you know when they played the game when they were reviewing it you know when when you'd connect to the you know the internet or whatever they i forget what they call it in the game but um they said you know like when we were doing it during that time when there was only a select few people playing the game you know it was cool when you hooked up to the internet and all of a sudden all these you know ladders and bridges and stuff appeared but now you play it now and it's just it's like the it's a world just littered with junk it's 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 not good <laughs> like all it is is just junk everywhere that people posted trying to get likes on it to get currency in the game and it just looks stupid now because there's just so much crap everywhere like it like so that that idea that concept works in theory, it sounds cool, but in practice, it just looks like everyone littering this world, and and it just looks stupid now. Like what what used to be a cool looking like, you know, vast like areas and deserts and stuff now is just littered with vehicles and and uh, destroyed armor and and signs that people put up just to get likes and. But you know things every scattered all over the place, and it just it just looks it, dumb it, now. But it represents on kind of how people are in the real world during this time. Is that you have you try to do something for good, but people, depending on who that person is, they would take what you are expecting and turn it not turn it around on them, but take advantage of it and make it feel like it's your own. So if you wanted to make it look a certain way or people are coming together to make it look a certain way, you got to realize that there's different levels of people on how they take things and what they create and make the output. So yeah, the world is going, the actual world is going to look junky, but I'm like, there are things that people have put out that have made stuff that supposed to be expected to be used for good used for different various purposes and you can't control it and I think that's one of the things Kojima probably didn't realize that once it's out there to the public you can't control it you can't control everybody doing one thing Mm -hmm. you gotta you just literally gotta let it out and be and i think with that stranding that kind of represents like when you come into this world we hope that you as a person who is honest and willing to work together with the community that want to that want to uh do stuff by the rules i hope that you are a person with it but you know there's no physical trust or anything there. We just we just base everything off of hope. So mm-hmm. whatever you put into the world, that's what you're gonna get out of it. And what you put into the world of Death Stranding is what your contribution is gonna be to this vast land. And this is what everybody else's contribution plus your own is gonna create. Mm-hmm. That that's yeah. that and that's yeah, my I, assumption. I, yeah, and I that I I understand like that like that whole thing. It's just un- unfortunately, like I just, it just never was anything that that seemed even vaguely interesting to me from day one. But well, and and, and it, that and that yeah, just and, just like hearing hearing people, you know, like people who aren't, you know, Ko- like well, I mean, like I said, Dan is a Kojima fan, and so like they, you know, it was pretty shocking for him to absolutely just be not liking it at all but I, but I, that that's the thing is i i take i'd take his i'd take his criticism of of it much more you know like higher up over over most people just because of the fact that he is a fan of kojima but and I think so that's... if he's gonna say that he doesn't like it then i'm gonna then his like his but see, in my that's, opinion his and that's his and that's thought a, is that's much more valid 
And that's the thing that I said earlier is that if you're, I mean, even though that he played in the stuff, mm-hmm. valuing someone, valuing, valuing another a critics or a personal, a professional person opinion is you can't consider that the, you take that in with the end, you know, with what you're going to purchase with it. But sometimes even, even if you're a fan of something, um, you still could be you as a listener don't ch- shouldn't just automatically just be like yeah I agree with them because he knows what he's talking about. Well, I think I think for I, me I think it's for me um mm-hmm. there's like like there's a lot of you know like having listened to their shows and stuff for quite some time now like I like I feel like in a lot of ways me and him are have very similar likings and and dislikings and so like that's another thing so like like you know that's the thing is if you know that's the kind of cool part about listening to a podcast uh, you know versus just reading uh reviews and stuff like that is like you can you can kind of like feel out personalities a little bit more Mm -hmm. and 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 find out which personality is much more like yours and then you you know then when you look at their their thoughts or their likes or dislikes you can usually judge like which person you're going to want to gravitate towards to listen to on their thoughts on a game because they're very similar to yours already but that doesn't necessarily ever mean that I'm not going to try something if they don't like it. But if it's something that I already like, I'm pretty sure that it's going to be something that I don't like. And they, they basically confirm what I, what I thought it was going to be. Then, then, then that's usually will be my final, it, that, my it, final it, judgment it, on it. I mean, but, it, I, I don't I don't think it's gonna be the final judgment. I think you know, of course, we're not final part judgment. This might be my final. Final your your, de- your decision about it. I, yeah. I think that I think the thing with that is that, um, you know, reading different like reading different reviews and listen to different voices of opinions. I think you gotta find where the commonality is at, where everybody yeah. is agreeing about something. Yeah, and where everybody agree like when you find the agreements for pros and cons i think that's when you could everybody at least can make a decision on about mm-hmm. what that game or what that product is when yeah. there's a lot of disagreements here and there um it comes to the point where are you willing to give something a try to have to yeah. get an experience that whether you like it or not you gave it a try and you experience it for yourself yeah. You well, know. and on it, and honestly, almost everyone agrees with everything that Dan said. That the reasons that he doesn't like it, but but that's just for Giant Bomb, right? No, no, that I'm talking like Game Informer, like all the different, all the different shows that have talked oh, about okay. it and talked about the negatives and the positives about it. A lot of people have have said the same thing with the story that the story just isn't that isn't isn't that great. Like okay, it's so the, the, and the, and the, so, the story. Okay. but the thing is, is Dan is the only one that had the guts to say that it wasn't good. You you know what? I think the story, and I can't like I said for a person who's who hasn't played it, it's just looking on the inside. It looks like the story would have worked if everything was just a CGI movie. Um. And the only reason why I say that is because of the trailers that Kojima and them have given us. Yeah. You know, because watching the trailers, you don't understand what Death Stranding is about. But if Kojima was just be like, these are just different trailers, okay. If you well, want to, if, if you, well, you want to, I mean, pick- like, we kind of knew what it was, but but I think that's the thing is people were hoping that it was more than just a game where you deliver packages. Well, I, I don't even think I don't even think the delivering packages. I don't, I'm not even talking about the the gameplay mechanic. Yeah. I, I was talking about showing like uh we're running with the baby when uh Gil Toro was running with the baby and um yeah. 
the other guy, he had those like dead soldiers and stuff. Like we were just like, okay, this is a war. Does this deal with time travel? Like, what are these? What are these black things? It was just like everything that he showed us in a trailer before you even get to what the game was about with the packages and stuff. You felt like you could get a sense of what the story could be if this was all connected as a movie and didn't really have any game part to it. So mm-hmm. if Kojima just did a straight CGI movie, released it for $14.99 or $19.99, I think people would understand if the story was better. I would say that. If the story was better, if there was more scenes to it to be like, oh, he really got these actors and got these celebrities and just really went to it and made a great movie, I think Death Stranding would work strong with there. Because I feel like Death Stranding, well, I think I think Death Stranding could have been something that could have been like a, a Oscar or Academy Award movie. Just by the just by the graphics alone with the CGI and everything. It could have been a really nice movie. And that's it without the gameplay. Mm-hmm. Well, but that but that's the thing though. I feel like if the if the the story itself was yes. was had had a better was better than what it seems to be, I uh, think the game Death Stranding would have been would, a good game. Would have been better. Yeah, because it because it seems like like one of the major gripes is that the story just doesn't pay off like like people would like it to like it's it's dragged out and it makes you it makes you really work for it and you just keep hoping that that it's going to get better and it just never does like that's what that's what I've I've heard a lot of, you know, different people say, you know, like they don't, they don't say it's like the worst story ever, but, but it just doesn't it get gets to lost. a point. Yeah. It gets lost. And, and I feel like if that had not been the case, that it probably would have been a really good game. But like, for me, like personally, I, you know, like the reason I knew that I wouldn't really care for it though, from the beginning is because I'm not, like I, I'm not really interested in, in like, you know, I don't care about stories as much in games. Like for me, it's all about like most of my fun comes from the playing it and the mechanics mm-hmm. and the, and I just like the thought of like a, uh, you know, a very big budgeted co-op game basically. It it just doesn't really interest me, you know. Like uh, just the idea of like your your whole mechanic is trying to walk like properly, and it's difficult when you're carrying things. Like that doesn't it just doesn't it doesn't interest me. Yeah, um, you and, know, and I can understand, and I can understand it, that. Yeah, I can understand. That. So. so yeah, it's but. The, again, like I, you know, like I said, I I really wasn't didn't think it was a game for me from from day one. I because I don't have any you know any affinity for for Kojima or like I I liked the very first Metal Gear Solid. I've played some of the other stuff, mm-hmm. but I I just I not it it wasn't enough to hook me into the franchise. I loved the first game, but it wasn't enough that like I had to have more, you know. I, so I I wasn't sold on Death Stranding because there were just too many CGI treaders. And I feel like this looks like this need to be a movie instead of a game. Um so but that that's I we had our mini discussion, I could just say right there. Uh <laughs> un, unknown uh unknowing. Uh but yeah, I, I I am I can say this. I am happy that people did pick it up. I am happy yeah. that people are playing it and giving their own opinion about it. I I'm like I've literally been like on just on Twitter alone, been really like you know liking stuff that people are talking about Death Stranding and really enjoying it, showing the pictures and just having some kind of connection to it. I'm just like thank you for at least being positive, giving this game a chance, and you know hopefully being part of part of the community. Whether people wanna the way people wanna discuss it, they'll discuss it and everything. Um, and yeah. we'll probably talk about this like in a couple of weeks because. Um, our, a discussion about review bombing we're definitely going to have. That's 
Yeah. I don't know what the world is going on, but I, it's becoming bigger and bigger. So we'll have a, that discussion. But yeah. let's get into it. Yeah. <laughs> let's get into it. Well, yeah. That, well, that's the thing is like, and like, th- that's what kind of annoyed me with Death Stranding a little bit too with the the major, you know, Kojima fans is like, mm-hmm. yeah, like they a lot of people were so mad when Dan said that he didn't like it and all this and that. And so, like, they had the next episode, they're like, yeah, like, they basically said, yeah, F you, we've played it, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> like, we, you know, like, how can you, how can you defend a game you haven't even played yet? Right. When I, you know, like, they, because the, people just were getting so mad and, like, so many people out there just, like, you can oh, how dare you not like a game, well, not that, a and- Kojima game. It, and it's and just like, dude, it, like, that's the thing. It, you can love the game. You can like the game all you want. If I don't, that do, it's not my, it's my opinion, person, my opinion, opinion yeah, does it. Yeah. That's, present, that means nothing so. to you ultimately then. Right. That's fine. You can have your opinion. I can have mine. Cause you probably been, I, and let's, we'll get into the show real quick. You probably yeah. have seen everybody was just like, uh, Game Freak lied and people was mad at the, uh, uh, Game Freak of the Pokemon company just being upset for days. And then Pokemon Sword and Shield came out. Have you, at, on your timeline, have you seen anybody showing so much hatred? Because all I've been seeing is people buying switches, people buying sword people buying shield people getting the, the deluxe package like people are buying this game showing off their characters showing off their party names asking if they could trade talking about the uh the dynamax stuff like people have literally been literally po- so positive about it that that uh trend of gay freak died and all that stuff is mm-hmm. nowhere to be found yeah, see, I don't know anything about any of that. I, I, and people I haven't were, really seen. People, I haven't seen anything about Pokemon. The only thing I know upset. about it is uh, I listened to Game Informer's episode, and of course, that that episode came out before the game did, so they couldn't yeah, like out. completely, you know, do a deep dive into it yet because it because it was you know of the. Enough? Yeah, they they can't they couldn't talk about it. So yeah, but they I, I mean uh, they did talk about it, but they couldn't they couldn't really go in depth other than saying that they they were enjoying it. But what I find really uh, like really amazing is a lot of people are saying like Luigi's Mansion is like <laughs> possibly their game of the year. Well, <laughs> like, it's uh, well and... like that it's so that it's so good in it and it like it finally does everything right because like, mm. you know, the first two games were good, but they, and they, they said, you know, the first two games are good, but there's just certain things that weren't, didn't feel like it was tightened up enough. Yeah. And they said that like, this is like the first one where it really just, everything feels tight. Everything feels, you know, like fun. And, and they said, it's like one of the best, uh, games to play with you know if you have kids to play to play uh to play co-op they said it's an amazing game playing co-op you know it's just something that the switch games unfortunately most of them haven't had a great co-op setting you know well i'm not saying that they didn't have a great co-op thing i think it was just like it depends on the people who were buying it and who like the games were catered to that's why i kind of feel like and we definitely got to get into the show uh i yeah. kind of feel, i literally feel like if nintendo doesn't win anything game of the year uh this year it's going to be really confusing for a lot of people um i, I know for you personally like resident evil 2 right now is and a lot of, a lot of a lot of people resident evil 2 is their game of the year right um uh, but it was but the thing with Resident Evil 2 is and this is a problem with Resident Evil 2 is that it's not going to be discussed probably until game of the year where i feel like there's been a lot of nintendo talk throughout the year um and, and it's it's very it's very weird like and that well, made, but Resident Evil also came out came at the end of the year yeah. so i mean it, it, you, you know think, like Right, and you would think that people would continue to talk about Resident Evil 2 throughout the Well, game. a lot of people do. I mean, a lot of people are constantly bringing it up about how it's, like, the, the, like, the, the, like, 
perfect example of how great uh, uh, a game being remade could could turn out. Like that's that's been brought up all throughout the year. Well, as that's... it being like a perfect example of of how good uh, a remake could be made and and become such a great success. Well. Mm... Mm. It, the, yeah, it has. I've been listening to podcasts. Well, uh, well, I've, uh, only I've reason, heard it only all reason, the year. I mean, only only and reason people. why is that that art that that argument could be safe for a lot of games that get remade, and because I'm like, you could use that kind of same argument for Link's Awakening in a sense. Yeah, see, and, no, a lot of people say that that game is but, just not. It's but, just not good, and it's like it's just it feels outdated. Like it just that a lot of people but did saying, not like saying, it who love the original. I'm saying, but I'm saying for Link's Awakening, that argument can still be said. Because the thing about it is, even though you may not say, even though you may say that... It, it's not. It didn't do but, anything. But, but, I'm, but what great. I'm saying but what I'm saying is, is that that argument used for Resident Evil could be said for a lot of remakes. And I'm using Link's Awakening because when it actually came out, and various podcasts and various people that you follow and listen to have said different things... Uh, 3.5 million people who picked up that picked up that game really enjoyed it and really said that this is the way that you have that you make a remake or this is one of the examples that on oh, how a re a game could be remade. Just just saying that your that argument for Resident Evil 2 could be said for like anything that's anything that's remade that's really positive and really shows that they um that this remake or this update to that game has really benefited from it, from making it uh, a great game, um, that that just that argument could be said. Because, I mean, like I said, regardless of what people say about Link's Awakening, people bought it. Same thing to people, Resident Evil 2, people bought it. And don't forget, Resident Evil 2 is on a whole different engine. Like, mm-hmm. they went, they yeah. went in well, and, the on thing. a whole different like, engine. They- and they had to yeah. re- they had to redo all of Resident Evil 2. Yeah, it's well, basically redo, a brand new awesome. game. It's it's ba- it's basically uh from front to back it's a brand new game. There is nothing about that game that like feels like all they did was, you know, lay lay the the original one, you, you know, over, or lay the lay the new one over the original oh. one the building yeah. everything like you couldn't go by the strategy guide of the original and be able to make your way through this oh, one no. or anything uh, like no. that it's because it's completely a different uh stuff, a different stuff, building there's stuff that they took out of the regular to and uh changed some stuff up but for mo- for most of the part you get a you get an idea of Resident Evil 2 uh, of the original one, it's just that this one is like feels really brand new and really fresh. So, but yeah. I'm just saying, but I'm just saying that you know, I think part of the discussion about it, um, the part of the discussion about Resident Evil Two is that I'm like it should have stayed in people's mouth throughout the year, um, and it kind of doesn't feel it, but it is. I feel like it's going to be a contender for a game of the year. It, it will probably win best. I wonder if they're gonna do a survival horror, uh, I, or. I, I mean, think it could win the. I think it could be a top contender for the game of the year. Like, see, and I, that's and the I that's think, the difference between an, uh, the Link's Awakening versus a Resident Evil Two well, is well, Link's is, Awakening has no way of this winning. Is, this is, I think, this is the thing about it is that Link's Awakening. Um, People are still, I mean, it's still being so like people are still yeah. buying it. People are still talking Resident about Resident Evil it. as well. Mm-hmm. They're at almost five million copies already, and growing. So I wonder if they, I wonder if that's because of sales for Resident Evil Two. Like nope. if it's like twenty dollars off or anything nope. like that. Nope. Because I don't it know. Hasn't if been, probably, I haven't I seen it. I don't on know sale. if they have a price drop. And the only reason why I, I say that, um. And we'll probably have to look at the NPD throughout the year, which I'm probably gonna have to research. Um, for um, I don't know if they're doing. I know the November. I think December doesn't come out until January. So 
but if I think if you look from just January to November, I think you get an idea uh, of what's been like kind of on the list. And it's kind of weird because I, I, in, in actuality, um, I think the only game that probably could take Game of the Year out of everything that's been released is probably going to be Fire Emblem. Awakening, no, Fire Emblem Three Houses. If not Fire Emblem Three Houses, it literally may be Astro Chain. Beca- mm. beca- because <laughs> of. I- I'm, just, Chain. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> no. saying that. I'm just Control saying. Control has a better chance actually, of beating Actually, Astral Chain. no. I think, yeah. Ast- I think Astro Chain may take it. I think Control has some. I, we need to get into the show. <laughs> okay. Five, four, <laughs> three. Two, one.